What's going on everybody? In this video we are going to be talking about function overloading. This is when you can have multiple functions with the same name. The way you choose which one to invoke is by what data you pass it. This video is sponsored by Visual Assist which is a plugin for Visual Studio. If you've been following along using Visual Studio I'd highly recommend you check out that plugin. I'll drop a link down below. This will enhance your C++, C and C Sharp development experience. So for those of you who have been following along you might be familiar with these functions, but these are three different functions. The first will print a regular array, the second will print an array from the standard namespace, and then the third will print a vector. These are all very similar, and they do pretty much the same thing. They print something. So we could actually name these all the same thing, such as print, but I'm actually going to be a little bit more specific here. I'll say print collection, um, implying collection being like an array, a vector, a deck, whatever it may be. So in this case, it's going to be these three collections, an array, a standard namespace array, and a vector. So this is actually going to work. We're not going to get any compiling errors initially, except from the calling code down here, which we need to update. So we can change this from print array to print collection, and the same for these as well. Perfect. So let's run this. And you can see all of the printing works as expected. Well, which one to call it depends on the data we pass in. It's smart enough to know that this should be the first function, this should be the second function, and this should be that third function. This should basically be used when you have some repeating functionality that you might expect different inputs for. Now, in order for an overload to be valid, it has to have different parameters. So, what might be confusing at first is if I copy this, and let's paste this, and inside of here, we will return true, and change this from a void function to a bool function. This is actually not a valid overload. And that's exactly what you'll see in this little error pop up. So that's just an important thing to know. I'm going to remove this as this is just for example's sake. Now you might look at these functions and realize, wow, the code between these is very similar. What if we could, in certain scenarios, just have one code section and invoke that for all of these different overloads. So let's say this was the code that we wanted to run and we just wanted it to work for these two functions as well. You can actually do that by invoking print collection inside of this function. So it might look like this, print collection. And which one is it going to run? Well, it's going to run the first one by passing in items but it has to be of type array. How is that going to work if it's currently a standard namespace array? Well, there is a method on this called data, and this will actually return the array data. So that is how we can convert to an old school array. And then we can also pass in items.size. And this will basically act as a replacement to all of this code down here. So we can remove this, and vectors actually have a very similar capability. Actually, it's exactly the same. So we will say print collection, passing in items.data and items.size. So basically we're saying, hey, for both of these functions, we just want to pass in the data as an array and the size to this other function up here and have it print the data. That'll save us from having repeating code and possibly introducing bugs in our software. And you can see it appears to work the same way. Awesome. In the next video, we're going to talk about function templates. As it is possible to design a function to accept multiple types as the arguments, and that is where function templates come in. So definitely check out the next video where we'll get some hands-on experience with that. See ya, peace out.